recording. Made. So what's up everybody, this is Peter coming to you with your next Java Made Easy tutorial. And in this tutorial we are going to be learning about the for loop or what others like to call it the counted loop. But I would advise you to call it the for loop. Uh, the reason why it's called the counted loop is that it normally counts to a certain value, it loops for a certain amount of times, and then it exits the loop. And loops are very essential in Java, so I would pay close attention. So what we're going to do is we're going to import our scanner like we always do. And in this program, uh, let's just say uh, a school comes to you and says, okay, we want you to make a program for us that uh, the teachers will enter how many grades they want to or the students will enter how many grades they want to enter and it will calculate the average of the total amount of grades that they enter simple enough so um so yeah that's all we want to do so we're going to create a scanner like we usually do user input new scanner system dot n And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make a variable called amount of grades, an integer called amount of grades. And we're going to say it's equal to, um, or it's, it's always good to prompt the user, sorry. So we'll, we'll prompt the user. We'll say um, how enter amount of, of grades. And then we'll call int amount of grades is equal to, and we'll say user input dot next int. So that's stuff we already know, and it's gonna uh, it's prompting the user how many grades would they like to enter, and that's it. So now we want to loop that many times. We wanna say they say they want to enter three three grades. We want to loop three times and get three grades that they want to enter. So first and foremost, we're gonna make a float called average because the average can be, um, um, it could have decimals in it. So we wanna make it 0.0f. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make a for loop. So this is the syntax of a for loop. So it takes, generally it takes three parameters. Now you don't have to put anything in these three parameters, but most times they do. So the first parameter is set to initialize, say, a variable or something. And you can initialize many variables in here. Now, I know I haven't taught you this about variables yet, but let's say, for example, you want to make multiple integers and you want to make like x, y, z, you can make them all in the same line. And if you wanted to, you could set it equal to 10, y equals to 10, z equal to 10 or whatever you could you could do that all in one line and let's say you had three variables or or a lot of variables that you want to give the same value to you could say z is e x is equal to y is equal to z is equal to whatever value and all of those values will be equal to 10. so that's a neat little trick if you guys want to utilize that but the first parameters uh in the in the for loop is used to uh, set um initial values for variables or modify them just the initial value and you can do as much as you want normally people would only use one and normally people you like to use the value i as a counter now when you're done with the first parameter you separate it by a semicolon letting you know that the first part of it is done the second part is um, the condition so much like the if statement it says like, okay like if this is true then do this if that is uh, false you don't execute it the for loops work the same way so we're gonna say if I is less than the amount of grades then we continue we continue looping this is the condition so if I is less than the amount of grades we loop if it's not if it is greater than or equal to the amount of grades we stop the loop the third one is how much we're going to increment or decrement it by or how much we're counting by. So in this case, we're just going to increase i by 1. So we're going to say i is equal to i plus 1. And that's simple enough. So what this is doing, it's initializing a variable to 0. This is the condition that the for loops need to, to meet in order for it to actually loop. And the third one is how much we in, how much we want to increment by. Now we don't have to increment this variable. If we wanted to, we could increment the value average, or we could say average minus um, minus or like is equal to average or like is equal to negative two, 
or we could do something like that if we wanted to. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you want to put in there, but most likely we are going to want to increment or decrement what what counter variable we we're looking for because we don't want to loop forever. We want to loop till a certain point. That's why it's called the counter loop. We want to loop to a till a mm -hmm. till a certain point, and then we want it to end. And sorry for that. That was my phone. So. What we're gonna do inside this loop is we're gonna say okay, system dot out dot print line, or we'll just say print. So we're gonna say enter grade number, and we're gonna put a plus, and we're gonna say i plus one. Or we put these in brackets. I plus one plus and we'll put a space so it's gonna say enter grade number and it's gonna is display what's i plus one so all so um i can uh, i'll talk about this after so we're gonna make a variable called total and we're gonna store we're gonna say or we're just gonna say value and we're gonna say value is equal to user input dot next int and then we're gonna say average is equal to average plus value that's all we're gonna do. So what is this gonna do? It's gonna say, okay, we're gonna set i equal to zero, and okay, is and let's just say the amount of grades is equal to two, okay? So we're gonna set i i equal to zero. Now is zero less than two? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's execute this. So it's gonna say enter grade number. What's what's zero plus one? That's one. So it's gonna say enter grade number one. We're gonna get that value and we're gonna add that to our average. It's gonna reach the end of this and then go back to the top of the for loop. And then it's gonna increase i plus one. It's gonna increase i by value of one. So is one less than two? Yes, it is. So it's gonna say enter grade number two. We're gonna get the value stored in average. Then it's gonna increase i by one. Is two less than two? No, it's not. It's equal to two, but it's not less than it. So it means, okay, this for loop is done. So now let's execute everything under it, and then we continue with our program. So after this, we're gonna say average is equal to average divided by the amount of grades entered. And that's gonna give us the average, and then we should make a call to system.out.println and we'll just display the average and that's going to be it for our program so if we run this and we say yep and we go down here it's going to say enter the amount of grades so we're, we want to enter uh, um, three grades so it's going to say enter grade number one and our first grade is say going to be 59 it's going to say enter grade number two enter uh, 80 grade number three 40 then it spits out our total average so I'm gonna run this one more time and walk you through this again so enter the amount of grades two grades so what's gonna happen is saying okay I set to zero okay zero is less than two so let's exit this so ex let's execute this so it says enter grade number one so we're gonna put the value 50 and then it's going to increase it by one. Is one less than two? Yes, one is less than two. Let's execute this loop again. So I'm going to put the value 50 again. Then it's going to increase it again. Two is not less than two. That means it's done with this loop. It's going to calculate the average, spit out the average, and then we're going to get to the end of our program. So that is it for for loops. I, I know they can be a, a confusing and daunting at first, but I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment and subscribe, and bye for now.